Mitake api. Chante wa shte. Na pe chuza pelo. I would like to greet all of you with a good heart and a very energetic handshake. My name is J.R. Whitehat, class of 2000. <laughs> I'm here today to support my nephew Mark and to perform a ceremony. In 1982, George Emony called my father, the late Albert Whitehat Sr. And he spoke to him about Proctor and how he and David Fowler were looking to start a Native American course here at Proctor. And he was happening to be coming through Montana, and he stopped in and my father's work at the Sente Galeshka University in Mission, South Dakota, at the Lakota Studies Department, and stopped in on his way through and talked to my dad about Proctor and what they were planning on doing, and asked if my dad would come and teach for a semester. And my dad said, okay. So, of course, my dad goes home and he tells my mom, we're going to move to New Hampshire. <laughs> and my mom says, what? You know. <laughs> but when, when he came, he brought the Lakota culture, philosophy here to Proctor. And it was a good match, the Proctor philosophy and Lakota philosophy. Very simply, they teach that we are all related, not only as human beings, but with nature. The trees, the grass, the moon, the stars. And that we are to be good relatives with one another. In my father's teachings, he would talk about Hundreds of years ago, in an era I, I like to call teepee time. And no, we don't still live in teepees. <laughs> but in this era, the young men, when they reach a certain age, they would gather their things in the middle of the night, and they would sneak out sneak out of their parents' teepee. And they would go on a journey called Zuya. This would be their life's journey. They would be gone for months, years, learning how to survive, learning their limits emotionally, physically, mentally, And if they survived, when they returned home, they would come home as a mature adult, ready to be an asset to their community. Today, all of you are completing your Zuya. I look out at you, and I look at my nephew, Mark, and I see men, and I see women. You are not children anymore. As Anne spoke, you are independent. From here on out, the decision is yours, what you're going to do, what you'll become. How are you going to be an asset? How are you going to be a good relative? In our culture, one of the highest honors a person could receive is an eagle feather. Fourteen years ago, when I graduated, my father was here, and he tied a feather on me in the same fashion. 
In 1994, when my sister Emily graduated, the same thing was performed. In 1987, when my sister Jackie graduated from Proctor, the same. So I'm here today to perform this ceremony for my nephew. I wish my father was here. I wish George was here. As we know, they're here in spirit. And we are very thankful for them coming together all those years ago and bringing these two cultures together. When you look at pictures of old Indians in tipi time, and you see them with their bonnets on, you'll see that it's not easy to earn one of these. My dad used to say it could take a man or a woman their entire life to earn one feather. I wish I had one to give to all of you. I do. Because you are all very deserving of this honor. So I'm going to pray with this feather. I'm going to sing a song. In Lakota culture, we have songs for everything. I mean everything. <laughs> they say it takes five of us to change a light bulb. One to screw in the light bulb and the other four to sing the light bulb changing song. <laughs> but I'm going to sing a song and pray with this feather. And as I do, I'd ask you to reflect on those graduates you are here for, to you parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles. Say a prayer in your own manner, your own fashion on asking for strength for them from this point on, for good fortune, for good health. And I'd like to ask you to remember my father and George and give thanks to them for all that they have done for this community. <clears throat> Lena! <laughs> 